Genesis 11. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves, otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. This is the account of Shem's family line. Two years after the flood, when Shem was one hundred years old, he became the father of Arphaxad. And after he became the father of Arphaxad, Shem lived five hundred years and had other sons and daughters. When Arphaxad had lived thirty-five years, he became the father of Shelah. And after he became the father of Shelah, Arphaxad lived four hundred and three years and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah had lived thirty years, he became the father of Eber. And after he became the father of Eber, Shelah lived four hundred and three years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber had lived thirty-four years, he became the father of Peleg. And after he became the father of Peleg, Eber lived four hundred and thirty years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg had lived thirty years, he became the father of Ru. And after he became the father of Ru, Peleg lived two hundred and nine years and had other sons and daughters. When Ru had lived thirty-two years, he became the father of Sarig. And after he became the father of Sarig, Ru lived two hundred and seven years and had other sons and daughters. When Sarig had lived thirty years, he became the father of Nahar. And after he became the father of Nahar, Sarig lived two hundred years and had other sons and daughters. When Nahar had lived twenty-nine years, he became the father of Turah. And after he became the father of Turah, Nahar lived one hundred and nineteen years and had other sons and daughters. After Turah had lived seventy years, he became the father of Abram, Nahar and Haran. This is the account of Turah's family line. Turah became the father of Abram, Nahar and Haran. And Haran became the father of Lot. While his father Turah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans, in the land of his birth. Abram and Nahar both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahar's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and Iscah. Now Sarai was childless because she was not able to conceive. Turah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Turah lived two hundred and five years, and he died in Haran.